So I'm with Andrew Glantz from Gift a Meal. Startup you'll have heard about a lot on uh, EQ and in St. Louis. They've been active since 2016, won dozens of prizes and have also raised funds from Arch Grants, Capital Innovators and some angel investors to the tune of over 250,000. And you guys have just recently launched a report that shows the impact of Gift a Meal on restaurant loyalty. Mm-hmm. Give our listeners just an overview of Gift a Meal, the food photos concept, and then tell us about the study. Yeah, of course. So, basic idea of Gift a Meal uh, is that it's a mobile app, and each time someone takes a photo at one of our partner restaurants, we make a donation to a local food bank to help give a meal to someone in need. And if the user then shares their photo on Facebook or Instagram, we give a second or third meal as well. Um, from the business side, the restaurants are paying Gift a Meal a monthly subscription to be on the app as a mix of marketing and giving back, so that's where the money comes from. And then with each photo taken, we make a donation to the food bank to help them distribute one meal of food or 1.2 pounds of groceries uh, to a local pantry where somebody in need could actually access it in their neighborhood. Um, So currently we have a little over 175 partner restaurants on the app, over 150 of which are in St. Louis, and we have over 31,000 people on the app and have given over 362,000 meals to those in need so far. So 175 partner restaurants. Mm -hmm. How much are you donating on average at the current run rate uh, every month to Operation Food Search? Yeah, so Operation Food Search is our food bank partner in St. Louis. We're also in Chicago with Lakeview Pantry and Detroit with Forgotten Harvest. Um, and so on an average month, we're donating about $1,700, $1,800 per month to the food banks. Right, brilliant. And that number is growing. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, if you looked at where we were a year ago, we provided about 180,000 meals. Now we're at 362,000 meals. So, um, yeah, as we get more restaurants on the app and more users taking photos, then we're able to exponentially increase the amount that we can donate every month. Right. And, yeah, your latest study proves the value of restaurants joining gift a meal and sort of supporting the app with their customers and promoting it. Can you tell us a bit about what the study revealed? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in general, the restaurants are joining gift a meal as an easy way to give back and then also to help drive customers to the restaurant and improve their experience. Um, so we just completed a 14 month case study with the Clayton restaurant Pasteria owned by Gerard Kraft. What we did is we matched the names on the credit cards of the people used at Posteria to the names of the gift a meal accounts. So we could have a segment of customers that used gift a meal and ones that did not. Um, in comparing the payment data of those two groups, we saw that the customers that used gift a meal were returning 3.8 times more frequently than customers that did not use gift a meal. And so that led to an extra per customer, on average, over $400 of extra sales for a posteria over the course of those visits by each customer since they were returning more frequently. And also, on average, they were spending a little bit more as well per check. Um, and so that was something that was really, really great to see. We also saw what people were saying about Posteria was exclusively positive. So a lot of restaurants don't like Yelp and public reviews and stuff like that. Give to Meal doesn't have reviews. It's just posting the photos with captions. And all the captions were positive about Posteria. Like the most frequently used words were delicious and best and pasta and gelato, stuff like that. Um, and so it was really, really great to see Gift a Meal used as a really uplifting thing at the restaurant. I mean, we provided over a 1,000 meals to those in need during those 14 months at Posteria. So making a big impact getting them a ton of positive publicity with people posting photos and saying great things, and then also leading to actually increased visits and business results for Posteria. What's interesting is that gift meal users are happy eaters. And you seem to be sort of collecting a foodie audience. But what I find really fascinating is that actually there's lots of foodies on the internet in general nowadays, and uh, lots of apps for discovery of food options and things like that but gift a meal has this social cause built in which is practical slacktivism that gift a meal users enjoy they're both foodies and committed to causes 
Yeah, and um, we've actually we did a survey of our users that had about 400 respondents, um, and we asked them a variety of questions, and 79% of the users reported they dine out at least once a week. So yeah, like you said, they're foodies, they're dining out frequently. Um, and then we also split that up based on people that used the app zero times. They just downloaded it, hadn't used it at a restaurant yet. One time, two times, three plus times. And what was interesting is the more frequently somebody used gift a meal, the more likely they were to dine out more frequently, which makes sense. Um, but also they were more likely to have reported to be donating to charity recently and volunteering more. So yeah, the people that use gift a meal are actively going out to restaurants and then they also care about um, giving back. So that's really a sweet spot we hit. Um, what's also interesting is about 60% of our user base is millennial. Um, so, you know, core base is 25 to 34 year olds is most of the people that use the app. Um, but still, that's over 40% of our user base is over the age of 35. Um, and we see that there's a ton of super active users that are 55 plus um, that are using gift to meal every time they're dining out. And so something that's really important to us at gift to meal is making the app super easy for everybody to use and not just saying it's for the millennial foodie who's taking pictures of food, but it could be for somebody that's 75 years old and has 10 apps on their phone. We want to make it a way that anybody can easily give back. This whole idea of like easily giving back, you know, I used the word slacktivism earlier. It's like slacktivism is the idea that we can be activists just by posting a photo on Twitter. And obviously there's been tons of positive things that have come out of this type of activism, but at the same time, there's a bubble around that and we've seen that it can be ineffective. With Gift Meal, what's interesting is your donations are growing every month and the idea was inspired by flaws you saw in the slacktivism campaigning originally. Yeah, so what I like about a lot of these campaigns is it makes it easy for people to try to support a cause. What I don't like is sometimes people just get satisfied with the post and then nothing happens from it. So when I saw things like the LS Ice Bucket Challenge, it was great. People are posting but not actually giving. What if we can make posting and donating one of the same? Every time that you feel fortunate and you're able to have a meal at a restaurant, you're able to take a photo and give back to somebody who, who isn't in that case. By posting, you're able to actually make a tangible impact. So that's something that's super important with us at Gift a Meal is to make sure the actions within the app are directly tied to the cause. Yeah, I really love the language you use there, you know, when you're feeling fortunate. I think that when we take photos of our food, that is actually essentially what we're feeling, the sort of thankfulness. Yeah, a good way that I like to think about it is a lot of us that are eating out at these restaurants have the privilege of deciding where we want to eat. Like, oh, am I in the mood for Mexican food or Chinese food or Italian food? Not where am I going to find my next meal? Like, is there going to be a supermarket in my neighborhood or do I live in a food desert? Um, and so thinking about the privilege of dining out in that way is something that I think is super, super important. That leads me on nicely to questions around what is the impact of giving to Operation Food Search? So Operation Food Search is the food bank that we work with, and they're distributing food to over 300 local pantries where people can access food in their neighborhood. Um, and this is also healthy food, like meat, produce, canned goods. So that's something that's really important where people can access healthy food in their neighborhood. They might just get fast food otherwise. Operation Food Search also has one full nutrition programs um, and educational programs to help people learn what different vegetables are when they're shopping and how to prepare those vegetables and things like that so people can eat healthy on a cost-sensitive basis. They also have really great policy programs aimed at targeting some of these other root causes of hunger. Um, and a lot of programs like Operation Backpack that are targeted at healing hunger for children. And there's a ton of data out there that if a child faces food insecurity, that has lasting impacts on their development and learning um, and educational outcomes and opportunities in the future. So if we're able to help target childhood hunger, that has a really lasting effect. And in St. Louis, it's one out of six children face daily food insecurity, meaning they don't know where they're going to find their next meal. A lot of the people that are relying on support, uh, the only healthy food they're going to get is from Operation Food Search in these pantries. So Operation Food Search does a ton and helps in so many different ways, and we're just very fortunate to be able to play a small part in that in order to help increase the size of their distribution budget, which then leads to spillover effects of having more money available for nutrition and educational and policy programming. Mm. And just to help people visualize 
How does someone who needs operation food search resources go about getting them? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. They have a hunger hotline, actually, okay. that people can call, and um, they basically type in their zip code after they call, and they get instructions to where the nearest food pantry is for support. There's over 300 local pantries that Operation Food Search works with in the area. People are actually going to get the food there. So they're not going to drive out to Operation Food Search to get food. It's all in the neighborhood where people actually are. So they can just go there for support and pick up food. It depends on the food pantry for whether they're open seven days a week or once a week or bi-weekly. And Operation Food Search is making distributions weekly or bi-weekly to all these different pantries so they get fresh food in all the time. With Gift a Meal, each photo is funding the donation of getting 1.2 pounds of food distributed to one of these pantries. So that's covering the cost of refrigeration, transportation, and labor. It's food that's in operations, food searches facility already that's donated by Schnucks and Deerbergs and community food drives, and we're making sure they have the money to truck that over to get it to the places people can access it. Okay, cool. That actually does add a lot of things up. So it's supermarkets, they're giving a lot of that food, but there's still just logistical fact of getting that food to these food deserts. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of times that people need this yeah, transitional moments and crisis. It's not just about homelessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a misconception people have is they just equate the hunger problem with the homelessness problem. A lot of the people that face hunger aren't necessarily out on the street. They might have a house or apartment. They might have a full-time job or multiple part-time jobs, and they just need extra support. So like I mentioned, childhood hunger is a big, big thing. If there's a single parent household, that's really important. If the elderly population, especially as it's growing with baby boomers right now, um, healthcare costs and all that adding up, somebody just might not have enough money at the end of the day to cover the basic costs of food. I mean, there's could be somebody that is perfectly content living life, not worried about hunger, and then something happens that puts them in a position, uh, like you said, it's transitional, um, where they face hunger. I actually went to one of the local pantries that works with Operation Food Search and spoke with a woman there, Bridget, and she shared her story with me about how her house had caught on fire and then she was crashing on the couches of friends and things like that. Um, and Bridget has a 15-year-old daughter, so then she had to rely on the food pantries for support as she was paying for the costs of her housing and she was kind of going from place to place and she just needed the support of other people. And then after getting that support, she was actually able to get back on her feet. Um, she's back on her feet now and she volunteers at that same food pantry where she got support and her daughter actually picks up some of the vegetables there and distributes them throughout their neighborhood to other people that need support now. And so that's something that really inspired me that it's not just givers and uh, receivers with this. A lot of the people that are getting help are just so, so fortunate. Like they feel very grateful for the assistance, and they're looking to see how they could give back too, even if they don't have a lot to give. The big takeaway that came out of this is that hunger can happen to anyone. Mm. We shouldn't be treating it as people that need and people that have. Instead, it's one big community, and we should all be supporting each other because you never know, it could be you one day. That's, again, a fascinating point you make, which is with every meal that's donated to Operation Food Search and every the bulk donations that Gift to Meal is making based on bringing all these partner restaurants in, it's really about providing a safety net. It's not about solving the grand problem of hunger in a kind of absolutist way. It's actually just like keeping a very important safety net alive and, and part of the fabric of society. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it on an individual level, for somebody like Bridget, if you didn't have access to the food pantries for support, that could have put her in a devastating situation. And so the impact that Gifted Meal is making isn't going to end hunger on this whole massive scale. There's a ton of root causes and other things that are happening, but we can make a really big impact in the lives of individual people. And as we grow, that impact could magnified it'd be huge. I mean, if you think about it, there's over 600,000 restaurants in the United States. If Gift and Meal scaled to be national, we had 10% of the restaurants, so 60,000, big number still, mm. but that would be over 100 million meals provided to those in need annually, so 120 million pounds of food distributed to all these different food pantries to support everyone. Um, so with Gift and Meal, we're not looking at solving the entirety of hunger, but the impact we can make 
can change people's lives. And also then open up the funding for programs that are targeting the root causes of hunger, like with Operation Food Search, supporting educational nutrition programs and policy changes and things like that. The other nice thing is it's very much anchored to its local network. So the St. Louis network of restaurants is essentially supporting the St. Louis Food Bank. The Chicago network supporting Chicago's food bank, right? Yeah. I mean, I strongly believe nobody should be hungry anywhere. It doesn't matter if they're in your community or not. But when we're looking especially at our own community, we have a little bit of that extra obligation to be helping a neighbor out. Because if you don't help, then there's no way that somebody in Nevada is going to even know about the problem. So by kind of being in your neighborhood, you have that responsibility to your neighborhood and your community. And so we want to make sure the donations were local for Gift to Meal. So that way you could be uniquely helping people that wouldn't be able to get the help otherwise. And the other thing that, going back to Gift to Meal itself, I think you've, you've done an amazing job of identifying behaviours, new behaviours online. We all know that we're taking photos of our food, for instance. You know, food photos have exploded as much as photos of pets. And taking photos of food, but it was there for proper photographers and now everyone's doing it as a result of having a smartphone with a camera and all that kind of stuff. But I think the kind of extra layer of thinking that you guys have done is around the motivations to do that, so that sense of being fortunate. So it seems like in the long run you could have an audience uh, of users who are more inclined to try and tie their their commitment to causes to practical things like volunteering and that kind of thing. And yes, I think we have a really active group of socially minded people on Gift a Meal that when they make purchasing decisions want to support socially conscious businesses and with their actions they want to be making an impact in every aspect of their lives. And so I think there's definitely more and more that we can do in the future to look to help enable them to give back in more ways in their lives. Yeah, right. I mean, as they get more and more active, presumably there's going to be a moment where they're requesting other ways to give, Mm -hmm. you know, and other organizations to give to. We're starting to dabble in this right now. It's tough as a startup because you need to stay very focused because you can't spread yourself too thin. But we're starting to dabble in a way to support other nonprofits in the community outside of Operation Food Search, where these nonprofits can invite a restaurant to join gift a meal and if the restaurant joins and mentions that invitation then we make an hundred dollar donation to that nonprofit. So you know if that nonprofit tells their email subscribers, hey, we're doing this special fundraise and let's get some restaurants on this gift to meal program that helps fight hunger uh, and they'll support our organization which helps childhood education. So it could be something completely separate from gift to meal. And their network of email subscribers invites five restaurants to join gift to meal. That's a five hundred dollar donation we can make to that nonprofit. The info for that is giftedmeal.com slash fundraise, and that program still in its infancy. Mm. So we're just talking with some nonprofits right now to try to figure out how can we create that program in an effective way that can assist all these different nonprofits. As a founder, I think it's really cool. You said you've had to keep it simple and stay focused in order to bring in cash into the business. And you've got investment, but it's not a huge amount for the scale of what you could be building. And you've got operational revenue, and it, it seems like even this study is still part of proving a much bigger concept and idea in general. I think you're beyond sort of product validation, mm -hmm. but there still seems to be something that you're really trying to get your hands around and explain to the restaurant community. The like second screen experience to restaurants that you are sort of developing. I think in terms of addressing the stage that we're at right now, I mean, if you talk to anybody in the restaurant industry, getting 175 restaurants to do anything is tough. Mm. So we're definitely past the initial stage of product validation. And we see that there is product market fit and that restaurants are willing to pay for it and they're staying on board. We have good retention numbers. So that's all been very good. Now what we're figuring out is, okay, how do we grow this from 175 restaurants to the next step would be 250 to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 10,000, et cetera. Mm. And with each of those milestones, they'll present new challenges. And one of the challenges is communicating our values to the restaurants. So that's why this case study with Posteria was so big for us is that it really expands the scope of restaurants that are willing to sign up for Gift a Meal. A lot of your investors are chain owners themselves, right? 
Right, like uh, one of our investors is Michael Steinberg, who owns the chain Garbanzo and has stakes in some other restaurants. And um, yeah, he has a couple locations of Garbanzo in St. Louis, and they've done great uh, in terms of a performance standpoint. That was really great to get a vote of confidence to have one of our restaurants invest in us. Cool. And, you know, what happens with the photos then in the end? Can restaurants use the photos in their own marketing? That's a good question. So um, we're working on a full app revamp right now, actually. We're going to give users the option to have public or private profiles. And when they choose a public profile, then the restaurants will have access to the photos as well as Anybody, when they're looking at the gift a meal app and deciding where to eat, you click on Posteria, you can see all the photos people have taken at Posteria. So it helps be more of a discovery tool for you. And then Posteria would then have access to the photos to post on their social media because sometimes restaurants have a thousand things to do and taking photos for social media content takes a lot of time. So if their customer bases are generating the content for them, it will make it really easy for them. And then from the user level, I think that'll help with completing the loop of the story Mm -hmm. in the user's mind of, oh, like, why is this able to provide a meal? I understand because it's helping the restaurant. Like, I'm giving the restaurant a photo, which is valuable to them, and because of that, they're helping pay, which is providing this meal. It's not as tangible to say, oh, um, they're going to make me feel better, and that's going to lead to increased visit frequency and stuff like that. So I think that'll also help from the user perspective of understanding um, that and completing the loop. Can you speak to any restaurants that have seen the boost from the social sharing of photos. Yeah, there's a ton. The window at Third Wheel Brewing in St. Charles, they had over 300 people take a picture on Gift Meal last month, which was a record month, and 100 shared their photo on Facebook or Instagram as well. Right. And, you know, the average number of impressions per photo was about 428 impressions, and so that really adds up. I mean, one way to think about it is, that when a customer posts something on social media at the restaurant, you're effectively transforming that customer into a brand advocate. I eat here, all my friends, you should eat here too. And when the user posts a photo, do they have to tag the restaurant they're in or automatically working it out? So it's all automatic. The user needs to take the photo through the gift and meal app. Yeah. So they click on the restaurant, they click the camera button to take a photo. We then use the phone's location services to verify the user's actually at the restaurant and not at home. And then once it verifies, then it'll post on their gift and meal profile and they can add friends on the gift and meal app and sync with Facebook to see those photos that they want. And then in the future, they'll be able to mark that as a public profile for other people to see. And then they're given the prompt to share on Facebook or Instagram to give a second or third meal. So the whole process is under 30 seconds. And do you have any power users emerging that are budding food photographers? Yeah, we do. Um, it's always interesting to see whenever we get like tagged by some of these users over and over again with their social media posts. And it was funny, I remember I posted um, Gift to Meal social media when I hit 500 meals provided and one of the users commented like, oh, I want to reach Andrews. Like, and I could see that her meal count keeps on rising. I mean, I'm dining out at Gift to Meal restaurants a lot. But, um, she's right neck and neck with me. Um, and yes, I mean, that's what's really crazy to think about is uh, I go on our admin panel sometime where I can see all the photos that were taken and stuff like that. And when I see that in live time and I see the users that have taken hundreds of photos on gift meal it's just like, oh my God, like this is something real that I created. Not just, it's not just numbers of like, oh, we gave 15,000 meals like last month. It's thinking through this many people actually gave some time to do something that I created. And that is pretty insane to think about. Yeah, yeah, your face lights up when <laughs> yeah. you say that. Uh, and it's true, you've, you've identified very clearly thought through some behaviour and actually with the ranking system it seems like you're now driving new behaviours, people competing to donate meals. Yeah, uh, the leaderboard of the friends on your app and stuff like that, we're going to be adding in a restaurant leaderboard soon and behavioural science of the field is something that we look to integrate a lot and we, our CMO is actually a behavioral science analyst as well with his training at Merit. So we've actually done research that's been published with academics in behavioral science that's been published in journals to uh, really run A-B tests and see what are the best practices that we can do in order to lead to these awesome results. Yeah, cool. Well, congratulations <laughs> on everything. Congratulations on the new study. I know it's a big step for you. Thanks a lot for talking to me and EQ. Andrew Glantz from Gift Meal. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it.